हेलो स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू होप यू आर डूइंग वेल नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज स्टेट हाइगंस प्रिंसिपल अ प्लेन वेव इज इंसिडेंट एट एन एंगल आई ऑन अ रिफ्लेक्टिंग सरफेस कंस्ट्रक्ट द करस्पॉन्डिंग रिफ्लेक्टेड वेव फ्रंट यूजिंग दिस डायग्राम प्रूव दैट द एंगल ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन इज इक्वल टू द एंगल ऑफ इंसिडेंस सो द प्रॉब्लम इज बेस्ड ऑन द टॉपिक हाइगंस प्रिंसिपल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू आंसर द स्टेटमेंट of the hagen's principle the definition of the hagen's principle uh, then we have to show that we have to show that the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence with the help of the wave theory because the hagen's uh, provided a wave theory of light so i'm going to answer the first part of this question first so the answer of the first part of the question is that each point of the wave front is the source of secondary disturbance you can see here that this is the diagram this is the source here this source generates the waves and there is a certain locus of this particular phase which is known as the wave front and uh, the wave wavelets emanating from these points for example these are the points so the waves originate from these separate points so in all directions these wavelets emanating on from the from these points spread out in the all directions with the speed of the wave whatever be the speed of wave these wave propagate in all the direction and the direction depends upon the nature of the source if the source is isotropic then there is a spherical wave front if the source is a linear source then there is a line wave front line kind of a wave front so the wave front shape depends upon the nature of the source for example here this is a point source and it is generating a spherical wave front and each and every point generates a secondary wavelets so this is written over here in the statement so with the speed of the wave these wavelets emanating from the wave front are usually referred as secondary wavelets so the wavelets emanating from these points these are known as the secondary wavelets and uh, if we draw a common tangent to all the spheres we obtain the new position of the wave front at the later time so this is the new wave front g1 g2 is the new wave front corresponding to the secondary wavelets this is the locus of the points after a certain time interval so here this particular term v into tau uh, is the distance because the velocity times the time duration is equal to the distance traveled by the these wave fronts so this is the answer of the first part of the problem now the solution of the second part of the problem in the second part of the problem we have to prove that the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence so to prove that we have to draw this particular diagram so this is the diagram which shows a particular plane reflecting surface in this particular reflecting surface there is a there is an incident wave front so the incident wave front comes like this and this particular wave front when this particular end strikes at the position a then this is the position of the wave front at the stream end which is at b so this is the wave front incident wave front ab now what happen that the speed of this particular wave suppose it is v and the time taken by the wave front to go from b to c is tau then v into tau is basically the speed multiplied by time which is nothing but the distance so we can say that bc is equal to v into tau where v is the speed of the wave and tau is the time taken from b to c now this particular distance or we can say that v into tau is used to calculate this particular distance ae because after this particular wave is impinging this wave front is striking on this particular surface then it reflects like this this wave front goes like this now the point a goes to e after a time interval of tau that is we can say that ae distance must be equal to bc distance the time taken by the wave front incident wave front from b to c is same as the time taken by reflected wave front from a to e so in this manner we can say that this particular factor v into tau is also equal to ae now here are two triangles first triangle is triangle eac 
EAC and the second triangle is triangle BCA triangle BCA now these two triangles are congruent we can prove their congruency basically they are congruent with RHS rule so in a right angle triangle if any two sides are similar or matching and uh, then we can say that the triangles are congruent now to draw AE to find out the point E we take this distance BC in the compass place the point of the compass here and make an arc like this so a is the uh, this is the arc from a and we have to draw this particular tangent to this arc now this is the formation of this particular point e now when this is the tangent it means that this is the right angle angle aec is equal to 90 degrees similarly angle abc angle abc is also 90 degrees so we can say that in these two triangles eac and bca these two angles are matching aec is equal to 90 degree as well as abc is 90 degrees similarly ac is the common side ac is equal to ac which is the common side this is the common side and uh, this particular length ae is equal to bc which we have proved earlier so this is our equation 1, this is our equation 2 and this is our equation 3. So from these three equations we can say that these two triangles are congruent with the RHS rule. With the RHS rule. And when they are congruent it means that their corresponding sides or corresponding angles are also matching. So according to the CPCT rule, CPCT rule we can say that this particular angle I, angle BAC, angle BAC must be equal to angle ECA, angle ECA. So this is by CPCT. And uh, we can say that this particular angle is I, BAC is I, and angle ECA is the angle of reflection. So we can say that this is angle R. So in this way, we have proved that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So this is the, uh, this is the solution, this is the proof of the second part of this particular problem. So, hope you understand the solution. Thank you.